Hello, darlings, and welcome to Tags Live, the live edition. I'm your host for the night, Cody Maurice Doggett, and I'm filling in for Stevie. And alongside me is my boo, my Miss Thang, Miss Teddy Alexis Rodriguez, right? Yes. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Teddy? <laughs> it is literally on the tag, bitch. <laughs> bitch. I'm like, do I know her last name? Are we friends even? Aww. <laughs> we haven't had a, 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 a luau in a long time. I'm I know. Uh, this is long overdue, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are well, you, baby? I'm good. I'm glad to have you here. And you look so lovely. Thank you, baby. So do you. Thank we you, saw each God. other like less than a week ago, so what oh, a blessing. Yeah. I know, twice in, in a short span of time, and mm -hmm. I'm loving every second of it. Thank you for coming yeah. on tonight, Teddy. Of course, anytime. All right, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that this month on Thursday, August 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're having a live stream Kiki available to our Patreon members. We'll be telling personal stories and performing four songs, two covers, and two originals, including Talk About It, which was inspired by this podcast. And Talk About It is available everywhere, so just go give it a listen, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so grab a tier on our Patreon, and you'll get lots of extras, like commercial-free podcasting, an extra episode a month, and access to our disco ch discord channel and a monthly hangout so go over there and just grab a tear and we will see you at the hangout all right now that everybody is reminded teddy are you ready for this jelly oh uh, ready for this i jelly. don't think i'm ready kelly <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, can you handle this? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Teddy, how is your Kamala Brat summer going? Um, you know, it's been a ride this last summer. Like, we literally... Um, I'm actually nervous about, if you know politics, you know that there's something called the October surprise, which is every okay. four years, there will be waiting? something crazy that happens in October. <laughs> and I'm like, what else is going to happen? We have an assassination attempt. We had the, the actual nominee step down, the vice president get nominated, all of that in like a span of less than 30 days. So I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous, but excited about the new ticket of the Democratic Party. And I think they are gathering some really good energy. So yeah, I'm looking forward. My cool. inner nerd is really excited. Oh, nice. Well, mine is going strong, too. And between Charlie XCX and Kamala Harris picking the new uh, mm -hmm. Tim Waltz as her running mate, things are shaping up pretty nicely, I feel like. Uh, and to everyone wondering how this relates to our LGBTQ plus community and this podcast is because Waltz has a strong record of supporting LGBTQ plus rights, according to the Human Rights Campaign. In July 2021, he signed an executive order banning the practice of so-called conversion therapy for minors, making Minnesota one of the first states to do so through executive actions. He has also supported legislation to protect LGBTQ plus youth in foster care and has been vocal about the need for comprehensive non-discrimination protections. Walsh consistently appointed LGBTQ plus people to key positions in his administration and has worked to make Minnesotans uh, a leader in LGBTQ plus rights and inclusivity. As a history teacher in the 1990s, Waltz also helped start his school's first gay straight alliance. So, Teddy, what do you think about Kamala's choice of running mate and how this decision affects our community? You know, the the vice president, it's traditionally not as relevant as the, the main person, um, unless it's somebody that is on the screen, right? Somebody that is really exciting or somebody that's really bad. And we can remember. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like this election in, in a nutshell. Somebody yeah, right? that's really exciting and somebody that's really bad. <laughs> uh, so for, for her, I think she made a very safe choice. Um, and uh, I do like the fact that um, he has a strong background in uh, supporting LGBT people. Um, I was excited that Pete Buttigieg was one of the people vetted. I didn't I think he was that. right about, uh, uh, 
selection for this specific ticket. Um, and the reason for that is that he he's just very young, um, exactly my age, so Queen Wink, very young. And also, um, <laughs> I think he needs a little more experience to be in, at the top of the ticket. Though, however, I think he's profiling to be at some point uh, a, an actual nominee because he really has the whole package. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, and I think they have a really, really real shot at uh, really cementing themselves into being our next leaders for the next four years. So, yeah, I'm I excited. couldn't agree with you more. I think that this is a wonderful pick for Kamala. I think that this rep shows everybody that she is dedicated to progressiveness and that she is willing to do what she needs to do in order to win this election in the hearts of the country. So mm -hmm. kudos to her. And yeah, we'll keep watching out and good things hopefully are coming our way. So uh, moving right along in Missouri, Republican candidate for secretary of state, Valentina Gomez, who last week had remarks on Imani Khalif the boxer that was under fire about a uh, gender dispute surrounding her. Uh, mm -hmm. She is quoted as saying, Gomez is, faggots don't belong in women's <laughs> sports. I know, right? I, it, was, <laughs> it even hurt me coming out. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> uh, so that is enough. But also in February, when she, uh, she set fire to LGBTQ plus inclusive books with a flamethrower so yes. she's serious about this i feel like <laughs> and she pledged to ban books such that were lgbtq plus inclusive um she if she was elected as missouri's secretary of state her entire campaign has been filled with hateful anti-lgbtq plus rhetoric and this person and i use person lightly because mm -hmm. and i put it in quotation marks because we're not sure yet uh she's right. come in six on tuesday's eight person republican primary in missouri uh so even the republicans don't want her and because yeah. she's a lovely fifth alternate in this pageant she didn't even win a sash a sash oh my god <laughs> she wore a participation medal There's a participation exactly medal. thank you for coming thank you for coming uh we and check your flamethrower at the front door no. please <laughs> <laughs> teddy what, what words do you have for miss valentina uh you know what she's doing it might be it might look funny and light uh, somebody using a frame drawer but that kind of imagery it's really serious because it really evocates uh the medieval times where um when we're talking about burning books and uh, things of that nature a lot of people died during the inquisition just because their books not because they were anti-christian just because they were just pagan and just like a regular pop book right um, so those things, we have to take them serious because um, the imagery, it's not coincidental. It might, it might sound idiotic, but it's not coincidental. So I do take mm -hmm. it seriously. And, you know, they really, really are scrapping the bottom of the barrel when they find this <laughs> white Tina bitch. I don't know where they got her from, but... Oh, white Tina. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I I look her up and I just and, and she is she has followers so it's it we do have to take it seriously and that kind of imagery is very problematic and really really scary. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I do think that her coming in six is telling of how society is viewing her and her very divisive. Uh, comments and and her ideology and how backwards it is really and i feel like that may hold some sway and it looks very good for us as a community and a society going forward but you're right i think it's very troubling and it's very worrisome that she's even out there and people can put stock in what she has to say it's so i say we watch out for this bitch because <laughs> i was trying not to call her a bitch but uh <laughs> sorry Facts are facts, America. It okay. just roll out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and these people, I, I just, you know, some of these bad weeds, 
you know, they don't go away. So she might have come uh, six this time, but what if next time she has a better, um, you know, campaign and then she's top two and then she got selected. So those are, those are the people that we really need to call out by name and make sure that um, they stay away from office because they're not fit to, to serve. No, her words, and I'm paraphrasing here, were sure. that she is destined and ordained by God to have this platform and she's the most prolific candidate out there right now. So no, mm -hmm. yes, we definitely need to be watching out for her. Just because she came in six does not mean that she is not still a threat. So yeah, definitely keep your eye on this crazy lady and her brother, apparently. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, segue. <laughs> <laughs> because this gets weirder, y'all. Gomez's sure. brother, Jonathan, was fired from his job as an aide in a New Jer as uh, in New Jersey uh, to a New Jersey mayor, sorry, after it was revealed that he had donated money to his sister's campaign. Jonathan Gomez Noriega worked as an aide to Jersey City Mayor Stephen Ful Fulop, uh, who is a Democrat and also served on the city's LGBTQ plus task force, which is very surprising to me. <laughs> uh, Gomez Noriega resigned from that task force on Monday issuing a statement online saying that while he did not support his sister's hateful remarks, different beliefs shouldn't divide us. And on Monday evening, Gomez Noriega was fired from his job after his sister posted a video online that included a recording of a conversation between Gomez Noriega and Mayor Fulop. Oh. In the recording, I know, right? In the recording, Fulop can be heard telling Gomez Noriega, if it's not clear where you stand, then you're not with me. You're with her and you can't work with me. Teddy, what are your <laughs> thoughts on this matter? And do you think someone's familial bonds, it say, do you have brothers and sisters? I don't even know. I have a sister, twin sister. You have a sister. If your sister, twin sister? Mm -hmm. How do I not know this? <laughs> we need to connect, okay? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, if your sister came out with anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, right. do you think I should hold that against you? And if you were a mayor's aide, do you think that those remarks should be, is it a fireable offense for your sister to come out this way? Yeah, so uh, we're really having three conversations at the same time. 18, so, that's why I was yeah, like, so, <laughs> I talked to you about me doing these notes today and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, there's layers on layers on layers here. Exactly. So I made, had to make sure I got it right, but go ahead, continue. So the idea, the idea of somebody's familiar bond should not affect uh, your ability to hold a job. However, they're talking about a public servant. So when you're a public servant and not necessarily only politicians are public servants. We're talking about community, college uh, employees. All of those people really do have to uh, demonstrate that they're not um, in shady business because um, just the appearance. Remember, when you're a public servant, the money that you get paid, it's the, t the money of the people. So that's why there are higher standards. It seems that there isn't because our public our politicians are so corrupt in this country but if you're a federal employee all the clearances that you have to get just by default uh in my school i have to get my fingerprints there's a lot of standards that most of the people thinking about the private sector they don't have to because they get to have their public lives however we do have higher standards and that's probably the reason that he got in trouble from what i've very very lightly read because these, these employees are really uh, what they call trust mm -hmm. employees. So if, they, if the, your employer doesn't trust you as they're serving the public, then you're pretty much employed as at, what they call at will. Yeah. And uh, you can be let go. Legally. Yeah, those were the exact words that were used in when the whole firing situation was discussed is that he's an at will employee. So he can yeah. be, I think New Jersey is an at will state, which, mm -hmm. you know, that's my home state and they do all kinds of crazy things over there, but I love it. Um, but I do think that this issue is for me, he, there's a conflict of interest here. So okay. I think the fire, the firing was justified in my personal opinion, because even though he did come out and say that he 
does not hold the same ideals as his sister. The way that this looks to this politician and to have this man underneath his wing, it it because the offensive offenses are so visceral like right. she's burning books she is caught saying the f word i'm not going to say it again but i think that because of how controversial and how her hateful rhetoric hits so many presses so many buttons in our community and with us i don't think that i think that when you grow up with somebody then there is a there are certain things that are programmed in you and you can unprogram yourself from having those views but it just he donated to her 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 uh campaign and oh. that was seen as as an offense as well so i really think that he it, it just did not go his way and he probably should have asked his sister to hire him hire him on her campaign if she really <laughs> wanted to be sure. in politics because it's this is it's very messy and I, if I were that mayor, I would not want to have myself associated with this person because it's it just looks like he could be aligned with his sister. And really, honestly, he just loves his sister. I, if it were my sister, and she, I would never donate to her campaign. Never in a million years. Well, he could have disavowed. even to, talk to her. Yeah, I, but he could have disavowed of what she was saying. Additionally... Um, we were talking about the books and things, but there she also has rhetoric about committing crimes against uh, LGBT people and she uses more violent and more uh, derogatory language than what I'm using. Obviously, I'm cleaning it up. So if you're a public servant and you're clearly saying, I am not going to serve these people, that's actually called EEO discrimination. So yeah. it's just there's. Girl, the, the the there's so many fails for this person to get. Uh, like, he ain't winning any suits or anything like that. So he just need to sasha away. Yeah, I mean the as far as the mayor is concerned, he because he's an at will employee, he's completely covered as far as the law is concerned. And why would he want this controversy associated with yeah. his? with his job as mayor. He does it. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he's going to get rid of this controversy because if he didn't, if Jonathan Gomez Noriega did not make it clear that he was completely against his sister's ideals and what she stands for, then I say wash it. So, and, and that's what they did. So I'm here for it. Hi, <sighs> girl, bye. I know, right? It's so heavy, but let's lighten <laughs> it up a little bit. Okay. And, but it's still kind of based on what we were talking about. So okay. in this time where political views are so divisive, what happens when Cupid's arrow lands on someone whose political views starkly contrast with your, mm -hmm. uh, your own? Can love truly bridge the uh, ideological ideological divide did i say that right okay all right i got all the <laughs> ideological that's what i was trying to say or or is dating someone with different political beliefs a deal breaker are there any pros and cons in such a relationship teddy where do you stand and uh -huh. would you date somebody with the po opposing political views in you opposing i thought it was opposing. different okay <laughs> well okay different or opposing <laughs> Let's break it down. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, it depends on where you are. Uh, uh, what is what, how big the pool of people is, right? Uh, <laughs> Not the pool of people. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have no option but to date. Wait, what? Okay, yeah. all right, go ahead, continue. Sorry, go ahead. Well, are you from Kansas? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am not from Kansas. I'm from New Jersey. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, now she's from New Jersey, now sure. Now she is from New Jersey. <laughs> um, you know, I lived in Texas for uh, for almost 10 years, and, uh, you know, everybody there is super conservative. So if and and I dated there so the people that I was dating were conservative. I think when people talk about the political differences uh we we can find some common humanity and when we're disagreeing it should not be on you know basic human things, right? Mm -hmm. So if your idea of if your politics is to dehumanize me, then your politics is not really that. It's just fucked up stuff, right? Um, 
So if we're talking about, oh, I prefer people to be paid hourly and uh, or, or salary or in that, that's a different conversation. Yeah. But because we're in a time, especially the last maybe 10 years, the, the divisiveness is so visceral, then now we're looking at different lifestyle choices. But in the most traditional times, most of the political differences aren't enough to dent human relationships if we are in normal times. Yeah, but we're not in normal times. This is an, an extreme time that we're in, I feel like. And I, for me personally, I think that you're right. I think that under normal circumstances, if I were to date somebody with different uh, uh, political views than me, uh -huh. as long I would be able to do it. But now, because the political views are so vast and they include a lot of social issues, that if you don't agree with me on these social issues, right. then I, I feel like we can't even begin to, to form it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because you don't agree with me that gay people that gay people should be able to get married right. it, for, that is what the extremist version of of my differing politi political views are that uh that trans people are valid and they deserve to uh exist and have gender affirming care so all of these things that affect my community and who i am as a person mm -hmm. i think that those are the the, the things that are unshakable for me. That's the foundation of who I am and whether or not I can form a bond with somebody romantically. So right. if it's about money or things mm -hmm. of that nature, I can I can totally find a bridge that we can cross because mm -hmm. if you make it money, then you can pay for me. So mm -hmm. well, I'm right. going to get mad at that. So I, I, I think that there are certain things that, for me personally, politically, that I can I can wash away or wipe to the side, but certain things of, about social issues and about everybody having things and 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 ha everything civil rights being equal, uh, those things are uncompromisable for me. So, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> I thought we were gonna put a light, but okay. <laughs> yeah, what well, I that was supposed to be light. Is that not light? <laughs> we're talking about dating. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Because we now we're having conversations about uh, uh, if we as LGBT people should be even allowed to exist in public spaces when we're literally uh, not allowing any LGBT characters to be uh, studied in any level at school, then we are really raising people as opposed to uh, talk about, you know, curriculum, which none of these people talking about books have any qualifications to talk to me about any curriculum ever so and speaking of books like you said they are trying to erase history honey and rewrite history so none of that will fly with me if you don't believe that the things that happen in history should be taught in our mm -hmm. schools then i don't see a bridge for us to cross in order us for us to have sex we can't have sex if you don't believe in history or science you know, so. we should do like Lizzie Strata when the women decided that they were not going to have sex until the men got it together and uh, stopped the war. Maybe <laughs> we, we as LGBT community should stop uh, having sex with the conservatives and say, hey, um, let's let's uh, fix this. And then that's maybe a way to uh, solve this. Hey, you just gave me an idea. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> let's not have sex with these <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, right. Mrs. Strata. Look it up. <laughs> okay, I will. Not Erica Strata, because that's the only Estrada I know. No, Liz Strata. Liz, <laughs> Liz, L I Z. Mm -hmm. I'll, okay. I'll I'll put it here. Okay, I'll Google her. All right. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> um. All right. So, I, wait. I'm the boss here. You don't boss me. Okay. <laughs> Um, so now we spoke about Imani Khalif earlier, whose gender eligibility dispute broke out following her victory over Italy's Angela Carini in about that lasted about a minute and alluded to the fact that she was disqualified 
at last year's Women's World Championship alongside Taiwan's Lin Yu Ting after two separate tests revealed that they both had elevated levels of testosterone, not XY chromosomes, guys. Uh, some Those are very different things. Two very different things. So some people, pro pu prominent pu pu public figures like J.K. Rowling and Elon Musk, fuel controversy on social media, accusing her of competing in the wrong gender category. Uh, well, she just won her semifinal, semifinal round and is advancing to the finals in boxing in the Olympics right now. Teddy, what do you think about this controversy and Imani proceeding to the finals? So we were having this conversation, I think, when we met uh, last week uh, offline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want any conversation around this to be expansive and not to be the inclusive, right? So okay. my point was, we can have a conversation where we are limiting people to compete is that we actually are at a crossroads right now and that we maybe have to expand what the gender divide in uh, these competitions is and okay. define it better, right? Um, having not looked at any medical records for these persons and just the fact that the Olympic Committee that handled this already cleared them for competition, I have to go by what they did, right? Yeah, so, of course. So um, you cannot now just quote some other thing that happened in you know, some other place, right? Um, just like if we were in court, what we're talking about is the issue at hand, not what I did when I was 12, not what I what did when I was 18, just what the what issue you is. What did you when you were 12? Um, <laughs> just an example. I was 12. <laughs> when I was 12, I was 12. <laughs> so, um, so to me, the conversation, first of all, most of the conversation has been super problematic. Yeah. None of it, it's actual real information um and uh, just the fact that this person was clear by the olympic committee then i don't i don't have to engage with anything else and uh, um good i mean she's in the finals meaning that no matter what happens in the finals she will medal so yeah. um that's exciting and uh, um and good for her you know and uh, even the people that were that they were quoting as saying that this person was like super strong and all this problematic language they came out and said, by the way, I didn't say that. By the way, that did not happen. By the way, I was sick. And so all of the stuff has been clear. So to me, people need to stop talking about and get on their lane. But like, what are, what, are you a boxing expert now? Um, you know, people that never actually watch a boxing uh, uh, match now has opinions about what is happening there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have watched a boxing match. So, um, <laughs> of course, we're Puerto Rican. Oh, of course, we're Puerto Rican, right? <laughs> um, so, my opinion on this is that transphobia in any level, and e even though this person is not trans, right? No. It affects cisgender women. It affects people, any woman. If you're a woman, this will affect you. So, I feel like the more that we as a society try to define what femininity is and what a mm -hmm. woman is, the more we will run into these issues. Because this is, even though she's not trans, this is a clear instance where transphobia is affecting people. Because if you if anybody can run up and say, oh, this is a such and such, or this mm -hmm. is that, then where is the line drawn for us to define for people to actually define themselves. I think right. that is such a crucial part of this and that can't be taken away. And I'm so happy that Imani, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, it moved on to the finals and that they are not letting this stop them from achieving their dreams. I think that it's so admirable that they keep going and they this criticism or these all these debunkings and, and things of that nature that are meant to harm them and because they're from 
uh, she's from Algeria. So yeah. this is something that is not legal in their country and it can actually mm -hmm. cause them harm. So people are not thinking about that. JK Rowling is definitely not thinking about that in her moldy house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, people really should take stock of how transphobia is affecting not only trans women, but women across the board. Because I right. definitely have known people that have been uh, dis, they have been discriminated against because people think that they are trans, when in fact they are cisgender women. So how right. are we going to say who, what, I can't define what a woman is. So how is somebody else going to define what a woman is or how a woman should look to an, a, a cisgender woman? So yeah, I think it's, it's a big issue. And I think that people should be more inclusive as far as trans people are concerned at the end of the day. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, since we're on the Olympics uh, uh -huh. and, and there's so much to report on. Oh my goodness. I mean, did we talk about big boner guy? I think we talked about big boner guy already. Not with me, but. No? Mm -mm. Well, okay. So what do you think about the, the pole vaulter man? It's not gonna be it's not gonna be sexy like people think. I actually think that what they're doing is really problematic because first of all, he didn't get caught. He his penis got caught in the in the the beam, but really his leg hit it first. So it's not like what people are saying, it's not oh. really right. And also, if we were talking about a woman's like breasts or something, getting caught yeah. in something, like people will be like, ah. Oh, and like we're gonna do it to a man that's kind of like sexually harassing to me so um next okay well i was here for it so i guess i'm sexually harassing this man and i'm sorry no no it's okay to watch that it's okay to be fun but it, why are you making a whole article with like uh screenshots of it like um variety like man. please stop because i i because i dm'd him and said he should go on only fans no <laughs> i did not <laughs> but <laughs> i might um so but speak while well, we're on the olympics uh and like i said there's so much to report of them but i want to focus on something a little bit more positive australian olympian climber campbell harrison kissed his boyfriend in front of the cameras after his uh, after competing in his category. He didn't make it to the finals like Amani did, but he didn't let this loss stop him from celebrating the fact that he became an Olympian. After the competition was over, he ran over to the sidelines and kissed his boyfriend in front of every last camera. Homophobes were up in arms, and I thought it was beautiful. Teddy, yeah. what do you think about this? I think it's beautiful, and I think we need to see more of these images, right? All existing in public spaces, uh, being affectionate with each other, and uh, because why is he going to hold back to, you know, congratulate his man uh, because he's in a public space, right? There, we shouldn't be doing that. It's 2024. So uh, it was cute, and good luck in uh, 2028. I'll see you here hey. in LA, maybe. Oh, <laughs> it's a good... I thought it was... Oh yeah, you're it's right. going to be in LA. Okay, but it's cool. part of it. It's in LA. I think there's uh, other 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 cities too that are involved. But yeah, lovely. I can't wait. Okay, maybe I'll come visit you in 2028. Okay. But oh yeah, I can't wait four years. <laughs> 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 okay, calm down, bitch. All right. <laughs> um, no, but I think that's great, and I think that this is like you said. We need more examples of this out there in the world. I take every opportunity to kiss a boy in front of a bunch of people whenever I can. <laughs> and I think that this is beautiful. I think that it definitely normalizes gay relationships and affection in this mm -hmm. world. And I think we need more of that, those examples, like you were saying. So thank you for weighing in on that, Teddy. Also talking about the Olympics, staying on the Olympics, Drag sure. Race Bar. I know, right? It's all politics and Olympics right now. That's all we can talk about because and that's what all the coverage is. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, Drag Race star Nikki Dahl has officially taken legal action against right-wing commentator Lawrence Fox. On the 26th of July, Paris Olympics kicked off and it was an incredible opening ceremony. The ceremony also featured a feast of Dionysus. Di Di mm -hmm. okay. Or Bacchus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bacchus, let's do that one because I know how to say that one better. Um, which was, in, it was, uh, a sickening runway segment from Drag Race France stars Nikki Dahl, Paloma, and Pichet. 
And while the performance was a hit amongst many pop culture enthusiasts, it also drew significant backlash from many anti-LGBTQ plus critics like Fox, who called the Queen's deviant little pedos. Wow. Uh, on Twitter, that was on Twitter. It didn't take long for Nikki to respond to Fox's bizarre rant and Nikki expressed her intention to take legal action against him which she did on August 2nd she filed paperwork to sue him for defamation and uh, through her lawyer Teddy what do you think of this news and did Mm -hmm. you enjoy the opening ceremony of the Olympics (laughs) you know it's funny to me that so many people are uh, up in arms this ceremony was so long it was one of the <laughs> longest ones. And I actually enjoy, uh, as a theater person, uh, I enjoy long things. I enjoy long things uh, very much. <laughs> and I like literally tune out at the, like two hours in, I'll tune out. Um, so I actually missed the feast. And then they started posting, and I'm like, what is this? What's happening? So, just a little bit of facts, you know. So, Dionysius, which is now considered the god of theater because his feasts, you know, in a Greek time, in the Greek ancient times, which predates Christianity, we're talking mm-hmm. about eight, uh, the, these, so this civilization was 800 BC. We're talking about a long time ago, you guys. Um, these ceremonies was what? How old were you then, by the way? I was just 12. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. Me and Bacchus I mean, go it, way but... back. <laughs> yeah, so these ceremonies really was what incepted the theater, the Western theater that we know today. So Broadway wouldn't wouldn't exist if these ceremonies and they were celelebrations of wine there were celebrations of sexuality meaning there were orgies that. happening here hey, you hey, guys hey. and most of these were men only okay so when we're talking about these conversations let's have the actual conversation like what well, what these images are and not just make up some shit that you just picked up in some blog in the internet that was posted five minutes ago. So let's have conversations that are actually intellectual. So, Ooh. you know, um, I, I, I didn't mind it. Um, the, the ceremonies were okay. I, I don't think they're one of the best ones. Um, and, uh, you know, the openings are always weird. People bring a bunch of things from different places. So, um, I didn't, I didn't I didn't mind it. I, I think it was fun. I think some of the stuff was fun. Uh but um I I don't find it offensive at all because it wasn't. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I'm glad and that you go. I Go forgot on. to talk about the Sioux. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Girl, get yeah. that coin. Get <laughs> that coin. I love that my my response was like made you remember that you forgot to talk about her getting sued <laughs> you were like oh wait no get that coin um yeah the uh, why are the immediate reaction to uh lgbt people existing is like we're pedophiles uh you know what get that that's defamation um i'm not a pedophile and you're gonna pay for it for damages so yeah. i hope you get a sign millions of dollars and you can set up and then you set up a trust fund for LGBT youth. And that would be just amazing for all of us. Exactly. I could not agree with you more. Uh, Nikki Doll is doing a damn thing. I'm glad she is standing on what she said she was going to do. I need to stop tapping this because it's shaking my camera. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I do think that it's something that is necessary for to show everyone that we are not playing games as far as our names are concerned and we're not associating ourselves with that type of speak. So for you to come at all LGBTQ plus people, honestly, because drag queens are like, they run the gamut. So Mm -hmm. I feel like for them to say that they're attacking our community 100% and everybody in our community basically. So attack on one of us is attack on all of us so i feel like this is something that needed to be done and it's to show everyone that we are not going to take this anymore because it's there are more uh straight heterosexual 
I don't even want to say this, but pedophiles out there, then there are honestly, uh, from my perspective and from what I've sure. seen out there in the world. But I think that for me personally, it looks like there are more people out there that they need to be worried about as far as head wash, head, their own households that they need to clean up. So that is something that, that, that we need to let everybody know, basically. Um, Bryce goes, he <laughs> says that <laughs> uh, the Frenchman that had the, the pole vault with his, and his yeah. dick got in the way. He was offered $250,000 to re reveal what his dick looks like. That's it. And, I mean, I, would you pay more or would you ask for more? I, would, I, I wouldn't have been having that conversation at all. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, Teddy, why not, Teddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I'm clutching my pearls. It's just that. Girl, that's I doing. mean, I'm the one that got on the pearls. I should be clutching mine, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do like your Fisher Price pearls. Those are cute. Oh! <laughs> Baby's first pearls. Oh wow! Mom, babies. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Buy me some new ones. How about that? Okay. Maybe if you come to LA, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Book me a plane ticket, and I'll come. Oh, I, I take it to this bitch. See, see. <laughs> Um, all right. So are we, are we moving on to that one that you sent me? Not necessarily the one that we scratched, but the one, the other one with the Kentucky clerk or yeah, sure. skip it. Okay. So former Kentucky clerk uh, who refused to issue marriage licenses to same sex couples a decade ago is appealing a ruling ordering her to pay thousands in attorney fees, arguing that the landmark Obergefell ruling in 2015 should be overturned. <laughs> <laughs> Davis objected to the same-sex marriage on religious grounds and was briefly jailed. A federal judge ruled in January that Davis, who is the former Rowan County clerk, must pay 260000 in fees to attorneys who represented a couple who sought a license from her office. Attorneys from the group, the Liberty Council, filed a brief Monday asking the Sixth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals in Cincinnati to overturn the ruling. Why am I getting all the hard words to say today? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so what do you think, Teddy? What do you think about this ruling? What do you think about Miss Kim? Um, yeah, Miss Kim is back, and Miss Kim is back, Karen. <laughs> and um, you know, I think that she needs to pay up. It's yeah. time. I, and also, this was ten years ago. She hasn't Mama. paid anything. You Mama. know, you, what the <laughs> hell is happening? This was in 2015, and now she is suing back to get the, not pay the attorney's fees. These people were um, legally married, and she didn't want to sign up their, their certificates. And the judge, the court, decided that she needed to pay $100,000 in damages plus legal fees. And they had expensive lawyers, and now they are ram you one, and now it's time to pay it up. That's my opinion. Yeah, totally agree. You, Miss Kim, you do not get to say who is allowed to be married and who is not allowed to be married. You are not the determining factor. You do not have, just because you, of your religious views, you mm -hmm. don't have the last say on who I can marry, okay? If you don't agree with it, move out of the way, let somebody else sign that shit because you, you're not gonna stand in my way as far as this is concerned. Now, it would be a completely different story if the law upheld what she was trying to do. Which that would it didn't. be- it did not and hopefully we can make moves to where it will not because you know you know we got a, a vote coming up so we, everybody do what you got to do that's that's on the docket of the supreme court for sure exactly so this is something that could actually go on record as being a law that gay people are not allowed to marry so we got to yeah. do what we got to do in order to make sure that that's not happening however and, that, if and there's Ms. kim a don't win yeah. So whatever. If 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 that were to happen, um, what uh, she will all, she will have to reappeal and then maybe get her stuff uh, clear. But um, that's not the case, and that's not what the 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 decision was was on her okay. denying the the service of of her office. So pay up, bitch. Yeah, pay, bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You want me to come to the house? I could bring the bill collectors with me, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just need to stand in front of her house. He's like, where's my check? Where where's is my, my check? check? Run me my money. No. Uh, 
Um, Bitch, better lucky, have my money. Hey, <laughs> you can't go wrong with Rihanna. Um, so, Teddy, yes. since we're talking about jobs and we've been talking so serious oh. about Olympians and things of that nature, the gays are asking, what are the most attractive jobs out there uh-huh. in the world? The gays on Reddit, who do the most, okay? Sure. So under a post dedicated to the topic, several factions emerged. Uh, There are those who are especially into blue collar gays, like mechanics, contractors, construction workers, (laughs) truckers, and the like. And then there are those who want a man who went to MIT and are in software and are making robots and shit, (laughs) (laughs) who are rocket scientists. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the overall general consensus was, if you got a job, then it's all good. (laughs) In this climate, if you have a job, that's sexy. (laughs) But what kind of guy do you normally go for as far as like jobs are concerned? Um, wow. So, you know, uh, a side story is that when I was uh, in grad school, I always felt that whenever I became a professor, I was going to become like this sexy kind of like, you know, person that, and and I always imagine it like being like, just like so elegant and it's not that. <laughs> I'm always tired. I'm always trying to get more caffeine in my body because it's like I'm very taxing. <laughs> so maybe, uh, but a good a good teacher is always to me sexy. So I think uh, oh, an teachers. educator, teachers, okay. professors, things like that are, uh, and anybody that it's uh, a little bit on the nerdy side. So everybody that does something like you know that you have to wear like special glasses for, uh, you know, all of that stuff. I mean, what? It, Who's got to wear special glasses for their job? <laughs> well, if you're, in, if you're in a chemistry lab, you have to. Oh, like those uh, goggle thingies. Okay, yeah. all right. Those are not special glasses. Those are just goggles, protective goggles. Girl, are you trying to be a contrarian to me today? What's happening I mean, to you? No, we yeah, didn't somebody needs to get laid. Issue. Oh my god, <laughs> she is angry. <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay, baby? <laughs> what is sexy to you? Now you and I both know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um. So me personally, I like it. Uh, I like a guy that is very artistic. So it's so funny that you like a guy that is like you and I like a guy that is like me that is artistic Mm -hmm. and is very creative. So did you ever watch Queer as Folk? Yes. So remember when Justin was dating that guy that played the violin? Yeah. That was my dream. That boy was my dream back in the Mm -hmm. day. I used to want a man to play the violin that looked like (laughs) him. Mm -hmm. And... But, you know, I, any type of artist will do, singers, uh, musicians, artists that paint or photographers, creative directors, mm-hmm. anybody, an actor. Yeah. So, yeah, I really like a guy in the arts. So, yeah, but that's just my, I'll date anybody. As so you don't like money. <laughs> 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 you right, you right. We about to be broke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bryce says that I was trying to explain what an erudite is. Yeah, an academic type. I like. Yes, okay. erudite. Yeah. Someone that's erudite. But I'm open. I'm open. Just slide into my DMs and uh, make your best offer. We heard that about you. We heard that about you. you did. Uh huh. Especially this Thursday. No, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of this Thursday, yeah. uh, we hung out and we had a great time and it was fabulous. So the pictures, when are they, when are the pictures going to come to me so I can post them on my Instagram? Um, I think Stevie posted some of them today. Did he? Yeah. Okay. He didn't give them to me. Anywho. So when we hung mm-hmm. out, we actually got a chance to meet one yeah. of the people that is in this next story. There's a new studio in town and it's focusing on Fire Island. Uh, Pines Play Studios is celebrating the vibrant and diverse community of Fire Island Pines. Uh, It's an extension of Pines Play, which is a collection of home goods and apparel that includes the popular meat rack tank and guys uh, and Pine Play Studio content ranges 
in its level of explicitness from engaging with in safe for work media that highlights the island's fun and adventurous spirit to very steamy, not safe for work adult content. <clears throat> Our films are artistic interpretations that blend reality with creativity. Uh, and the reason I want to do this story, again, because we hung out and we met this guy, Lucas Leon. So yeah. what, do you, what do you think about Pines Play Studios? And what did uh -huh. you think about meeting Lucas Leon? Did you even know that he was, because he was in a show <laughs> yeah, in, in the bar. I knew right. he might have to be a performer okay. because we were at Rebar in New York and uh, they had this show, which is um, what I would call in theater, what we call uh, like shadow puppetry, shadow but it was, yes. it, it was uh, people <laughs> instead of puppets. And uh, they were just, you know, doing fun things in the shadows. And uh, <laughs> afterwards, because somebody got, you know, when Cody told me that he was a hungry top, I thought that he meant something else, but he left and went to Taco Bell. So when we were leaving, <laughs> we were trying to find Cody's that he said Taco Bell. <laughs> Uh, we ran into one of the performers. Oh my god! And uh, so and, funny. I read, I met him too. Okay. Oh, yes. Remember when we were like, "Where is the dark room?" Because we wanted to find the dark room, and we went into that oh, area. You talk to him afterwards when you, you were in the Taco you Bell. Did. Yeah, I was in Taco Bell. <laughs> I thought that's where you were referring. So funny. Yeah, we. I met him earlier when we were in that little area. Mm. So. You know That's, that is hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no. I, I can't believe you met him when I was in Taco Bell. Yeah, is he nice? He was super sweet, and we invited him to the podcast, and he's gonna come on in a later episode. Oh, cool. So uh, we got that booking, and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, uh, the content is really sexy. Um, uh, and uh, they have some previews on Twitter. Wink, wink. So look them up, and yeah. Looking forward to actually talk to him more in depth. Oh, me too. I, I can't. I'm glad he's coming on the show. I can't believe yeah. I was in Taco Bell when you guys met him. I yeah. actually got to speak to him because I just met him and it was weird and we were like, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that uh, this is coming out because the Pines, honestly, I haven't seen many, much out there in the media to highlight the Pines. I know that it's like our best kept great gay secret right now. So mm -hmm. I'm glad they're out there showing what the pines is and really advocating for the pines we should probably try and get the creators behind pines play on this on here too so maybe i'll reach out to them so please and that is fun all right moving on to some reddits which what reddit did you were you interested in doing bo um <laughs> jockstrap maybe okay we can do that one after we do okay. Just uh, pick one. because jockstraps are, is, is going to go pretty quickly i feel like okay Okay, so um, I'm gonna go with this ultimate fantasy. Okay, Ooh. what's your ultimate fantasy or sexy idea that you haven't had the chance to explore with the partner? And they don't even go into details as far as it's concerned. So that is the question. So Teddy, I wanna approach <laughs> that question to you. What is a, uh, something that you haven't done with a partner that is your secret fantasy? So I don't have a partner. So basically everything, uh, my fantasy is to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it includes previous partners so i i would say um nothing that is multiple people i've done uh so i'm, I'm, I'm wait excited. so you want to do something with multiple people or yeah, yeah. oh okay like uh, that, four or five i don't know let's start with three <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> 405 sounds like the Spice Girls. That's a lot of people. Stop right now. Thank you very much. Yeah. I need somebody with the human touch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I read some of these? These are really funny. He Go says, ahead. I want to be a dominant bottom personal dildo. Oh. Wow. I, I want that too. Okay. Um, a little guy back with four or five guards. Uh, risky places, situation, especially in a public. So you see, I don't. I, I personally don't like risky sex. Oh, why not? Um, I I am a person of of that. I enjoy more sex when I'm more calm. So I'm okay. more zen that way. Now that is mild. That doesn't mean there are two different things. But if I'm like nervous about getting caught, that doesn't excite me. It's the opposite. 
What about you? What is what is your your, your since this is your Reddit? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I want to explore. So let me tell you something that I love to do that I have mm -hmm. already done. Honestly, I've had sex with a partner in a public space, and I love to have people watch me having sex. Oh, interesting. It is. It's. Uh, it fills my soul. <laughs> it gets my dick so hard. I oh. love. I I love to have people watching me because I don't yeah. know. I think it's the performer in me. I yeah. love. And so just so in theory, that will that that would not have to be in your place then. So it will have to be like a sex place, right? Yeah. I, so, but only. Place. But only with. I don't necessarily. If I'm with a partner, I don't want anybody else touching my partner. So right. <laughs> I think that for me personally, I think that I need, I would love to have sex in like a sex club where I can just have people watching me. And I've done it in right. a sex club before right, where right, right. with a partner and we were in like a booth where people mm. could see through the, the, the sides where is of the this? booth. It was in Montreal, honey. It was fabulous. We need to go. <laughs> wow. That's and so it was a, it was like a, a wet works or something like that. So, um, mm -hmm. and people could see through, but they couldn't touch us. So it was, it was so hot. I, I was actually on the bottom in this instance. So oh, I know. she was bottoming. So I think I want to do it as a top yeah. and just have people watch how I get to pound. So what's the etiquette? Bottom. I'm always concerned. I'm always uh, curious about what was the etiquette of that because I've seen in a, in a sex clubs that sometimes like just because you're in the dark room and maybe getting frisky with one person like it's like you know open season and people like kind of gravitate to that to that yeah. couple and sometimes i'm just like i don't like what 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 would that be oh james volunteers <laughs> <a trivia. laughs> you got really distracted by that comment didn't you you were like on uh, <laughs> on track with your comment and then that popped up and now you're, you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> but that, there you go Cody. but the, the, that's what the question is what what would what is the etiquette like because sometimes people can be like aggressive in that way yeah i i get aggressive back honestly if i don't want somebody to touch the person that i'm with i will let people know that it's not okay for them to touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and normally, nine times out of ten, they respect my boundaries, yeah, but yeah. sometimes you have to get, be more insistent with people that right. that is not something that we're into. We're here for you to watch us, and, and that's it. So as long as you know your boundaries and you know where you want things to, to end and mm -hmm. you have a, a decisive end to it, I feel like that that is where... It, it translates a lot better because you know in your heart where you want things to where you want things to end. Mm -hmm. Consent, right. consent, consent, right? Consent is important, honey. Okay, because if it's not if it's not consensual, then it's not for me. Um, do you want to do this jock strap one really quick? Sure. You you were the one I wanted to do with that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <laughs> this redditor asks, "Can I wear a jock strap in the gym?" I was wearing a jock strap because it's sexy throughout the day but when i went to the gym i didn't have the chance of uh, i didn't have a change of underwear but changed from my work clothes to my gym clothes i was wearing a job strap is that okay do straight pe straight people see jock straps in their normal world what do you think teddy <clears throat> well jock straps are for you know the 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 actual <laughs> function of a jock strap is for baseball players and people that had to wear cups so yeah straight people have seen them <laughs> so it's not a gay thing. Uh, second of all, I would think that it would be better to wear them for the gym as opposed to for work. Um, but uh, I guess I have it work backwards. I, I mean, he wanted to feel sexy in his work yeah, clothes. Yeah, I guess. Like Alicia he, Keys, he looks a lot different outside his work clothes. Sure. So the, <laughs> I... Uh, I've seen it. I've seen it in the gym. Actually, yesterday I realized that a couple of people were not wearing underwear. Because, Was it me? No, I wish. The <laughs> because you know you notice things, and especially I was doing legs, so there's a couple of things around around me that were like kind of like very revealing. Um, so I think that if your underwear is your underwear, 
I actually wear underwear and compression pants to the gym because I want everything to be like more tight. I don't want things right, and right going through the side or getting caught on, you know, because I'm there to work out. So, um, well, good for you. Good for you and your jock strap. Yeah, I wear a jock strap all the time to the gym. I get a little self conscious sometimes because you can definitely see with the the gym shorts that I wear, you can see that it's a jock strap. So yeah. sometimes I get a little self conscious, but I don't. At the end of the day, I don't care. It's about me feeling sexy, and mm-hmm. so. As long as you feel sexy, go out there and do it. I feel like if I have to change into something else afterwards, like work clothes, if I'm not just leaving the gym in my gym clothes, then I will not wear a jock strap because everybody don't need to see my ass in the gym. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, well, all right, y'all. That's our show for this evening. You can follow our guest, Teddy Alexis, on Instagram. You can follow me on two different. Uh, places. Well, Teddy Alexis's handle is Teddy Alexis. Teddy Alexis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> my handles are KMD Coaching. And for more th- thirsty uh, content, you can follow me on Mr. Maurice. Um, you can follow the show at Tax Podcast. And you can follow uh, Steve V for his OnlyFans also at Tax Podcast. All right, Teddy, thank you so much for this um, uh, for coming and joining us today. And thank you to our amazing audience. Uh, and in the meantime, continue having hot, hot gay, gay sex. sex. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.